welcome to the Imprint YouTube training channel. My name is Tommy and I've got the great pleasure of serving at Imprint. Now, Imprint exists to leave a healthy mark on the ever-growing church in Africa, providing trustworthy biblical resources and training to churches. Now last week we closed our session on membership when we looked at a submit to the local church. And today we're starting with a new exciting series, and the series on baptism. So we're going to work through this little book on a baptism, written by a good friend of mine, Bobby Jameson. And we're going to look at how baptism and membership fits together. We will be working through this, and it's available on our uh, bookshop, online bookshop. You can go check out our um, um, website, imprinton.org. I'd like for us to look at what baptism is and how it applies to the church today as we start off, just to give, give some foundation here. A little story, when I grew up, we always played a game in the, in the pool, in the swimming pool, where we would wrestle and then dunk people under the water. Bobby mentions that in his book as well. Well, was that baptism? No. <laughs> it was fun. But it wasn't baptism. So what is baptism? Now, we believe that dunking is important for baptism. It's completely going under the water. What turns the dunking into baptism. What's the difference between the game we played and baptism? And Bobby gives a great definition of baptism on, on page six in his book. And it's a chunky and a long one, but hang in there and listen carefully. It says, baptism is a church's act of affirming a believer's union in Christ by emerging, emerging him or her in water. And a believer's act of publicly committing him or herself to Christ and his people, thereby uniting a believer to the church and marking off him or her from the world. Now, as I said, that's a mouthful. But let's look at the definition in pieces. We're going to break them into pieces. And to make it simple, there are two things that you need to remember with baptism. There are basically two parties involved. If you look at our definition, then it's a church's act affirming and a believer's act of identifying with Christ. So those two parties need to be present in a real baptism. We'll look into that later on. But the church needs to be involved. And what, does, what makes a church? We've seen this before. It, 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 it's filled with members, so believers that believe in the gospel. So look at our sessions on what is the gospel, conversion, and then membership. So that's the church. And then a member, one person. And that you can look at our session on conversion. What is a believer? So it's the church and a believer that comes together and that makes a baptism a, a real baptism. But let's break the definition down and, and see how it interacts with baptism. And the first thing is, it's a church's act. So baptism is a church's act. So they act, the people, the believers, as we saw in membership. The church is the people. So it's an act that the church performs. Now we see this in Matthew 16 and 18. Go read there. That Jesus gives the keys, basically just the authority, to the church the church affirms who is in the kingdom and who is out of the kingdom. So they look at your profession. So it's a church's act to see the profession. And what do they do with it? Second, next part of the definition. Affirming a believer. And Bobby says on page 8, uh, affirming of a believer by the church is setting a visible public seal to an in invisible spiritual reality. Mutual faith in Christ joins us together. And baptism signifies this union. You see that the church affirms, they say, yes, your testimony rings true. What we see in you looks like a believer. So come and join us through baptism. That's basically what it says. So as a church, look at someone's profession of faith. It's their job to declare it to be a true or a false profession. If it's a true one, you baptize. If it's a false profession, you evangelize, like we've seen in our other sessions in evangelism. What is the third breakdown? It's by emerging in water. So it's interesting, the Greek word baptize means to 
dip or plunge into water. And when we look at examples of baptism in the Bible, it's, it's full of immersion. The Ethiopian eunuch, Acts 8 verses 36. We see the same in, in Romans 6 verses 1 to 4, where you identify with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Well, death means you are buried under the ground, right? Well, in Jesus' case, in a tomb, but it was, it was inside. So you go into the water. The next thing is, it's a believer's act. So that's the church's part. So they, they act, they test the profession, and then they baptize. Now, what is the believer's act? The believer's act. So a church baptizes, a believer gets baptized. Can you see a church baptize, a believer gets baptized. And that is also why it's called believer's baptism. And this is also why we say that you need to be baptized to become a member because only believers can be members of a true church. And only believers can identify with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 6. We see in Acts 2, 37 to 39 and, and verse 30, 41, that the people on, at the day of Pentecost were cut to the heart. So they were grieved by their own sin. They repent and then what? They were baptized. And here's the kicker. It says, and they were added to them. So they were added to something, which is the church. They were baptized into the church. What else does a baptizee do? He publicly commits what does a believer do? He or she is publicly committing themselves to Christ and to his body, the church. Go look at our previous session on submitting or rebelling. It's exactly what they do. I want to identify with Jesus what he did. Identify with the gospel. Gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. That's what I want to identify. But if I identify with that... I need to identify with his body as well, because they all are identifying with the same gospel. Uh, Jesus does not have any secret followers. It's a public profession of faith. The only way to follow in Jesus is openly and for everyone to see. And Bobby says this on page 12, really helpful. He says, baptism is where faith goes public. It's beautiful. It's where baptism saying, you put up your hand and you say, I am a believer, I believe in Jesus, I identify with Jesus, and I identify with his bride, the church, right? Now, it's a bit of a, a different con context in, in those days. I mean, if you get baptized, even today in certain countries, you'll get persecuted, right? We're kind of spoiled in the Western world, but that is exactly how serious they took baptism. Now, he says also part of the definition is his people. We saw earlier in Acts 2 when people uh, repented and they were baptized, they were added to something. They were added to what? <laughs> a body of believers, which is the church. Membership. Go look at that in our previous series. So to identify with Jesus and to join him is to identify with his people and to join them. Church, the people, the membership. Next section is marking off themselves from the world. So they are being brought from darkness to light, from death to life, from being individual in the world and marking themselves off from that into a body of believers. When you are in Christ, you cannot be in the world. We read that in, in, in 1 John 2. These two kingdoms do not go together. You're either in the one or the other one. So, we need to realize that baptism is a sign and showing your identity with Christ. The physical act does not save you. So, that's why I emphasize the word sh a sign. It's a sign that you believe in Christ. Baptism does not wash you physically. It does not wash your sins away. Only Christ's blood can wash your sins away. So, it's not the act of baptism that saves you. We are saved through our trust of faith in what Jesus did for us. Go back to our gospel series. Also, we need to understand that it's not a, a human tradition. Jesus gave us an instruction to obey so that we can do this. It's an act of obedience. So you see that the baptism does not save you, but it's an act of showing who you are in Christ. 
Question time. What is baptism? Number two, does baptism save you? Number three, what happens when you get baptized? Number four, why should you get baptized? Number five, how does baptism and membership fit together? Now, I'm sure you have more questions, so you're welcome to leave us a comment and we can have a good discussion. But here's some scripture verses to put everything into context. And the first one is Matthew 16, Matthew 18, Acts 8, Romans 6 verses 3 to 4, Galatians 3, 25 to 27, Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 22. So those are some of the homework that you can go and do and, and just be really excited about this as you are. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, but remember to click the subscribe button. You can find us on Facebook at Imprint On or our website, imprinton.org. Our bookshop is on imprinton.org. And then our podcast, Imprint Out Loud, that we discuss some very exciting topics. So go and subscribe to that and share all of this to as many people as you want that you can think of uh, that will find this uh, blessing as, as many of you have written to us. So leave us a comment below. But that is what we have for today. So I'm signing off till next time. Take action, read and learn. <laughs>